Well, first, I just wanted an alternative to crumbling cash and crumbling credit. I just wanted the number not to go down. Right. Most people don't think their number goes down when they're holding dollars. But if you, once you understand the inflation rate, you realize your purchasing power is going down if you're not keeping up with the cost of capital. And so your wealth is being destroyed. So first, I just wanted the number not to go down. I wanted to preserve wealth. And then, then we realized that it was uh, a high quality property. I think the, um, I think the epiphany comes when you realize that it is, it's the dominant digital property network and digital property is better than physical property in every way conceivable. So if I, if I theoretically designed digital property, I want to store a billion dollars. I want to, I want to hold it in the palm of my hand, move it at the speed of light, vibrate it a million times a second. I want it to last forever. I want immortal, indestructible, infinite, all powerful, programmable energy, right? Matter is energy. Energy is matter. I can convert energy. I could take a billion dollars and turn into a building. I could, in theory, turn a building back into a billion dollars. I can buy a billion dollars worth of electricity. I could buy a billion dollars worth of guns. Whatever it is you want to do, right? That you know, money is ultimately monetary energy, and you can convert it into any kind of product or service or property. It's the apex. Once you realize that Bitcoin is digital property or digital money or digital energy all of these things, then it becomes clear that everything else you could possibly own is inferior to that, right? You, you would really never want to own anything other than pure digital energy, right? Like why, why do you want to own a building, right? The only reason you want to own a building is you are going to freeze to death if you didn't have something to come in from the cold too, right? Like you would own a building to live in because otherwise you're going to freeze to death. Okay, that's a good reason. But with all your discretionary energy beyond that, if you chose to own a 50 story skyscraper in Manhattan, is that as good as digital? No, because the mayor of Manhattan can seize your building by eminent domain. If you're thinking you're going to rent the building out, you know, the politician can tell you that you're not allowed to evict any of your tenants, even though they don't pay you, right? So the property in the physical realm can be impaired by any political jurisdiction, anyone, anyone with jurisdiction over the property. And that means, that means the neighborhood uh, review board, right? The neighborhood building committee can tell you you can't put an awning in front of your building. The mayor, the governor, every, every regulator, OSHA, you know, environmental review boards, the Congress, the Senate, the White House, everybody in, in that physical domain can impair the value of your property. So not only that, it's going to be impaired. The second is it's going to be taxed, right? Because when they decide to tax your building, you can't move your building. And the third is the building is not appealing to anybody else in the universe. Like if I'm a billionaire in Beijing, why would I want a skyscraper in Manhattan? If it's, if it's illegal for me to travel to Manhattan, why would I want to pay for that thing? So if you have a billion dollars of property in Manhattan, it's not, it's not fungible and it's not desirable everywhere else on earth. It, what I want is something that is universally desirable through all space time. How desirable will your building be in 500 years, right? B buildings, not, right? And so there's another interesting dynamic here with physical property. There's a maintenance cost. The cost of maintenance is the theoretical investment every year you have to make in order to preserve the property value. You know, if you ever own a boat, you know what that is. Stop investing in the boat, the boat sinks. If you own a building, like what's the useful life of a building? 40 years, 80 years, 100 years? Show me a building in Manhattan that's still good 200 years later. Still desirable. So property, property in the physical domain 
doesn't hold its value through time and it doesn't hold its value through space and it's not fungible right the rockefeller center is not the same thing as a thousand acres in kansas they're different things the rockefeller center is not even the same thing as another big building in manhattan whereas a bitcoin is the same as a bitcoin and we're back to your issue like where do you get rid of volatility one bitcoin equals one bitcoin yeah.